Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Preet Bharara, and I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Uh, welcome to Cyber Monday. Uh, as you know, the cyber threat in all of its forms has been a top priority for law enforcement for several years. As you saw earlier this morning, when the Attorney General of the United States announced a landmark case against Chinese government hackers for engaging in economic espionage. And now, here in New York, we are announcing another global law enforcement operation that has exposed and crippled a frightening form of cybercrime, affecting hundreds of thousands of computer users around the world. It is a pernicious piece of software developed and sold by an organization known as Black Shades. Black Shades' flagship product was a program known as the Remote Access Tool, or RAT for short. The RAT is uh, inexpensive and simple to use, but its capabilities are sophisticated and its invasiveness breathtaking. <clears throat> for just $40, the Black Shades RAT enabled anyone, anywhere in the world, to instantly become a dangerous cyber criminal, able to steal your property and invade your privacy. Once installed on a victim's computer, the Black Shades RAT allowed users to remotely and secretly gain access to everything on a victim's computer, including private photographs and documents and even passwords to online accounts. <clears throat> it could even record every keystroke entered on a victim's keyboard to speedily steal credit card and other sensitive information. Perhaps most disturbing, and taking the meaning of spyware to a new and more personal level, it even gave users the ability to activate a computer's camera to spy on a person in the victim's own home. And all of this without the victim's knowledge. The threat posed by Black Shades was far-reaching and it was global. Our investigation revealed that over the past four years, the Black Shades RAT was purchased by users in over 100 countries, infecting more than half a million computers. Our actions announced today take significant steps towards shutting down this threat and bringing those responsible to justice. We have charged three key members of the Black Shades organization, as well as two cyber criminals in the New York area who purchased the software and used it to victimize hundreds of innocent people. Specifically, we announced charges against the two alleged creators of the Black Shades RAT, Alex Usel and Michael Hoag. Usel, a Swedish citizen, was arrested in Moldova in November 2013, and he is awaiting extradition to the United States. The indictment against Usel has been under seal and was made public earlier today. Mr. Hoag was arrested in Arizona in June of 2012 and subsequently pled guilty in January of 2013. Mr. Hoag has been cooperating with the government in its investigation since his arrest. We have also charged and arrested today <clears throat> Brendan Johnston, a former Black Shades employee who helped market and sell the RAT, as well as provide technical assistance to its users, and two New York area purchasers of the RAT who allegedly used it to steal online account information and spy on victims through webcams. They are Kyle Fedorik of Stony Point, New York, and Marlon Rappa of Middletown, New Jersey. We have also seized the domain name for the Black Shades website where the RAT software was sold and obtained warrants to seize assets belonging to Black Shades' owner. Uh, before getting into some additional detail about the case, uh, let me introduce and thank our law enforcement team, and it's a formidable one. I'm joined here today by our investigative partner in this and so many other extraordinary cybercrime cases, the FBI, represented here by Cyber Special Agent in Charge Leo Taddeo. I also want to recognize and thank Assistant Director in Charge of the New York Field Office George Venizelos, also Assistant Special Agents in Charge Austin Burglass, Supervisory Special Agents Richard Jacobs and Andrew Cordner, and Special Agents Patrick Hoffman, Mitchell Thompson, and Andy Dodd. <clears throat> I also want to thank, as always, uh, the career prosecutors in my office who have worked so tirelessly and creatively in this investigation, specifically Jim Pastore and Sarah Lai, who led the case, as well as their supervisors of the Complex Fraud and Cybercrime Unit, Richard Tarlow and Nikki Friedlander, Sarah Tur uh, Turner, the Cybercrime Coordinator, and Paul Monteleone of our Money Laundering and Asset Forfeiture Unit. <clears throat> so how did the Black Shades RAT work? Getting this dangerous software was alarmingly simple. 
It was advertised on online computer hacker forums, and it could easily be bought on Blackshade's websites. Once purchased, the RAT user could install it on a victim's computer in a number of ways, including by tricking victims into clicking on links contained in emails, or getting them to view a video or visit a website that would cause the malware to be installed. Once a victim uh, had his computer infected, a spreader feature could help disperse the infection to additional computers. For example, a user could set up the rat to send an instant message to another potential victim. The message would invite the potential victim to click on a link that would lead to the recipient's computer getting infected. To give potential victims a false sense of security, the instant message would appear as though it had come from someone with whom the victim regularly communicated, like a friend. So what were some of the ways the Black Shades rack, rat wreaked havoc? <clears throat> well, a number of ways. First, as I mentioned earlier, the Black Shades rat enabled its users to intrude on the victim's privacy in the most sinister way. They could activate the victim's computer webcams to spy on and record them in the privacy of their own homes. One of the defendants arrested today, Marlon Rappa, is alleged to have done just that. Second, the rat had a, a quote-unquote keylogger feature that recorded every keystroke on a victim's computer, as well as a form grabber feature, which automatically captured all the information entered into electronic forms, such as login screens to, uh, or order purchase screens, allowing its users to steal victims' passwords and other account information. Using these tools, one of the defendants arrested today, Kyle Fedorik, allegedly used the rat to steal online account information from more than 400 victims. Third, the rat had a tool known as the file hijacker, which allowed rat users to encrypt or lock a victim's files and then demand a ransom payment to unlock them. And if you look at the visual to my, to my left, you'll see what I'm talking about. As you can see there, the rat even included a, sim a sample ransom note that could be sent to victims saying, quote, your computer has basically been hijacked and demanding payment in order for the computer to be decrypted and restored. Fourth, the RAT enabled its users to direct infected computers to carry out yet other cyber attacks. For example, infected computers could be gathered into a network and used to launch distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks that could completely disable legitimate websites. Now, these threats posed by Black Shades knew no geographic boundaries, but nor did our investigative efforts. The scale and scope of international cooperation in this investigation has been remarkable and unprecedented. In the United States alone, the FBI and our office obtained court-authorized search warrants for more than 100 email accounts and servers and seized more than 1,900 domain names used by RAT purchasers. If you look to the map to my right, you will see that that chart shows we have worked closely with law enforcement agencies in over, in over 19 countries, providing relevant information and leads to each, resulting in, so far, 90 arrests and counting, and over 300 searches. As I have said before, cybercrime is a global threat to both nations and individuals. And as the twin actions announced today make clear, it is without doubt one of the greatest threats facing our country. As today's case in New York makes clear, we now live in a world where for just $40, a cyber criminal halfway across the globe can, with just a click of the mouse, unleash a rat that can spread a computer plague not only on someone's property, but also on their privacy and their most personal spaces. In such a world, the law enforcement community must be committed to confronting cybercrime with sustained dedication and creativity, and that is what we have done here. In the face of this gathering global threat, we will do what it takes and go where we need to go to protect the property and the privacy of our citizens. And now it's my honor to call to the uh, podium Leo Taddeo of the FBI. Good afternoon. My name is Leo Taddeo. I am the Special Agent in Charge of the Cyber Special Operations Division for the FBI's New York office. I am joined by agents from the FBI's New York Cyber Branch, as well as prosecutors from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. Today we announce the unsealing of charges that are the result of the FBI's investigation of the de developers, distributors, and users of malicious software, malware, 
known as the Black Shades Remote Access Tool. Alex Yusel, as alleged in charging documents, headed a criminal organization that developed and sold the Black Shades Remote Access Tool, or RAT. The Black Shades RAT gave cyber criminals the ability to take over a computer without the owner knowing it. Armed with $40, a computer, and access to the internet, a cyber criminal could use the Black Shades RAT to spy on, steal from, or extort an unsuspecting victim anywhere in the world. It required no sophisticated hacking experience or expensive equipment. To borrow a phrase from a popular advertising campaign, Black Shades made taking over a computer so easy, even a caveman could do it. The tool allowed cyber criminals to steal passwords and banking credentials, hack into social media accounts, access documents, photos, and other computer files, record all keystrokes, activate webcams, hold a computer for ransom, and use the computer in distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks. Ucell did not act alone. He employed several administrators to facilitate the operation of his organization, including a director of marketing, a website developer, a customer service manager, and a team of customer service representatives. As a result of their efforts, the Black Shades RAT was purchased by thousands of people in more than 100 countries. Hundreds of thousands of computers are believed to have been infected. Combating cyber crime is a top priority for the FBI. The charges unsealed today should put cyber criminals around the world on notice. If you think you can hide behind your com computer screen, think again. Just like in the physical world, the FBI will follow the digital trail to your doorstep. If you think operating in a foreign country puts you out of our reach, think again. We have many law enforcement partners around the world who are with us in this fight. If we can't reach you, they can. During this past week, FBI agents in over 40 cities across the country conducted searches, interviews, and arrests of people who purchased black shades and may have used it to commit cyber crimes. We also passed leads to foreign law enforcement agencies around the world. In the last few days, our law enforcement partners in 19 foreign countries carried out their own law enforcement actions. The combined efforts of the FBI and foreign law enforcement marks the Black Shades takedown as one of the largest global cyber operations in history. I want to thank our foreign law enforcement partners for their assistance, in this case especially our partners in Europol and Eurojust. This case would not have been possible without the relentless work of FBI computer scientist Tom Kiernan and FBI agents Patrick Hoffman, Mitchell Thompson, Ilwan Yum, and Andy Dodd, Supervisory Special Agent Andrew Cordiner, and Assistant Special Agent in Charge Austin Burgless. I'd also like to thank the prosecution team at the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District, District of New York, led by U.S. Attorney Preet Barrara, Assistant U.S. Attorneys James Pastore, Sarah Lai, and Paul Monteleone. If you believe you may be a victim of the Black Shades Rat, visit FBI.gov for information on how to check your computer for the presence of the Black Shades malware and other information on how to protect yourself online. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Leo. Now we're happy to take your questions. Unless there are no questions, in which case we'll. Okay. Well, as as um, as the cyber special agent in charge just said, I think you, your best bet is to go to FBI.gov, um, and there'll be information there. And I think there'll also be more information forthcoming uh, from the government in the coming days. I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, Austin Burglass, Assistant Special Agent in Charge, uh, New York office. Um, so in addition to visiting FBI.gov, um, the message will be up there. Um, basic uh, practice in place, make sure your antivirus is up to date, uh, your operating systems are patched, uh, don't open uh, emails or answer uh, advertisements from folks that you don't, uh, don't know. Oftentimes those are the, uh, the places where the uh, malware is often laden and uh, can infect your system. Can, can I just say something about that? You know, cybercrime is very sophisticated, and there are lots of opportunities for people to infect your computers. And sometimes people think it's uh, 
it requires great ingenuity and creativity, and it sometimes does to protect yourself against that kind of infection. But in the same way, in the medical profession, some years ago, people realized that, that the, the single simplest way to prevent infection in the hospital was to wash your hands. There are very simple ways, as, uh, as Austin just pointed out, for people to protect themselves. And those, uh, those precautions never go out of style and never go out of fashion and are incredibly infected, uh, effective. You know, do not click on links that you're not familiar with. Change your passwords over and over again. And although that might not always be enough, it is an incredibly important step, and I think it bears repeating as much as possible to the general computing and consuming public that simple measures like that can largely, uh, you know, stave off this kind of infection. Yeah. Uh, just the measures in the Connecticut study. What kind of dependency? You know, there's a there's a list of th there are various charges with respect to each of the defendants against whom charges were unsealed today. Uh, you can look at the at the press release, but generally speaking, with respect to most of the charges, there's a 10-year maximum sentence, but there are multiple charges pending against various people. Yeah. Yeah, you. <coughs> yeah, so, so we arrested two people who we describe uh, in the charging documents as co-creators, another one who is an administrator and an employee. And the other two that we arrested <coughs> uh, today are people who bought the software. Um, and then I think around the world, uh, there are people who are ultimate buyers of the software and use it to infect and uh, rip off other people. There are, uh, of the five that we have announced, four are in the U.S. and one is pending extradition from Moldova. I, I think what we allege in the documents is that th we, we have the two creators of the, of the virus. I think we allege in documents also that there were other people who were involved in the organization, um, and the investigation remains ongoing as a, with respect to those folks. Yeah. How easy is it to get someone extradited from Sweden or Sweden <coughs> to the U.S.? Well, something like that. I mean, we, we're, we'll, we work very hard at it, <coughs> and the process is pending, and I don't know how long it will take, but hopefully it will be successful. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, uh, that's, you can ask the question, but I don't think I'll be able to answer it because that's not a case that we're, that we're responsible for here up, up, up in New York. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, th what we allege here and the infections that we're describing in this case all relate to, uh, to computers and not on mobile devices. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what's your advice for anybody who's paid the $40 to buy this thing? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say a number of things, um, one of which is not printable. They, they, should, they, sh they should come forward. And, and at a minimum, they should stop doing what they're doing. Um, and as, as, look, the amazing thing about this, uh, the events of today and I think it's hard to overemphasize. Um, a number of years ago, I don't think we would have been able to get as many countries on the same page, on the same day, at the same time, you know, in unison, working uh, shoulder to shoulder to get as many bad guys as happened, you know, in the past week. And so I, I hope, and in answer to your question, and, and the reason I think it's responsive to your question is, I think the days when people thought they could always very simply, anonymously, uh, you know, buy malware like this to infect other people's computers and invade their privacy and steal their property are over because you can't just hide in another country anymore, whether it's, whether it's Moldova or anywhere else, that, uh, you know, the nations of the world appreciate that it's, it's a global threat, not just a threat that affects particular countries like the United States. Um, and, you know, hopefully people appreciate that time is running short for them. Someone new? Yeah. Yeah, some of them are. It's, it's hard to get at everyone. Um, we wanted to announce this when we have arrested a number of people and when we've got the arrests up to 90 or 100 around the world. As I said before, it's an ongoing investigation and we'll get as many people as we can. The most important thing from our perspective is to, pu is to publicize the issue, publicize the threat, and to get the people who are uniquely responsible for creating the threat 
uh, and we've done that, and we'll keep working on getting as many other people brought to justice as possible. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. The, I don't know if we allege that with respect to the first, but but certainly there's an allegation that someone who is creating a product that was designed almost exclusively to commit crimes, um, and when you have that knowledge, you're prosecutable for crime also. Um, I don't know if it's the. I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head the cases we've had. I don't think it's the first time that people who are responsible for malicious malware have been prosecuted. I don't know if one comes immediately to Leo's mind. I don't, I don't think it's the first time, but, it, but it's possible. Ah, right. The Gozi virus, um, we prosecuted a number of people with respect to that, and we can get you the information about that if you, if you call us up. Yeah. I'm not going to comment about uh, what we did with particular countries. There, there are too many to mention. Whatever's in the public documents and that the German authorities are prepared to provide, I would, I would refer you to them. Last question. Someone back there. Look, I, the, the, other, the other signal thing about this is, <clears throat> as is often true in other kinds of prosecutions and investigations, one successful investigation and prosecution leads to others. And you may recall, I don't remember how long ago it was now, a year and a half or two years ago, uh, the FBI and our office put together a, a pretty groundbreaking investigation called Operation Card Shop, where uh, sort of like bees to honey, the FBI created a website, uh, so, so sort of a super secret website, where bad guys were coming to find ways to engage in, in bad practices and buy malware. And as a result of that incredibly in innovative investigation run by the FBI, uh, they got on to people who were engaged in the Black Shades malware also. So that investigation led to this, and we hope and expect that this investigation will lead to others also, and there's a, a domino effect of some sort. Yeah, last question. Yeah, I, I'm not going to um, say anything really beyond what I've already said about that. Uh, we have taken possession of all the Moreland investigative files. Uh, in addition to cyber, we have a lot of things that are important to us, including uh, at the top of our list also uh, public corruption, which has been rampant in New York, as I think you all appreciate and as I have said a number of times, and as the cases that we have brought established beyond a reasonable doubt. And, you know, we'll see what happens with the investigative files and, and what we turn up. But we plan to pursue everything very ag aggressively since the Moreland Commission itself was disbanded nine months in. And Thanks, is everybody. We are working, uh, I'll answer generally, we are working with everybody in the state with whom it makes sense to work with uh, and coordinating with local DAs and other federal prosecutors, uh, prosecutors always, um, and we are doing that in this case as well. So That's three questions. That's on a different topic, even your third question. <laughs> right. Thanks, everybody.